In this video, we're going to be going over the fundamentals of DTM, Distributed Test Manager, by Triangle Microworks. The first thing I'm going to talk about today is how the DTM network is set up. Um, this includes master and slave DTM machines, um, the DTM services, and how licensing works for DTM. So the first thing you want to do is when you launch DTM, you should have uh, DTM admin, which is this GUI you're seeing right here, launch, and either the services, DT control, DT manager, and DT host, launch either as services in the background or as windowed applications. To configure each type of computer, you'll want to go to tools, configure DTM services. That will bring up the DTM services configuration window. On your master, you'll want to have this radio button clicked that will let this machine know that it is the master for the DTM network. Uh, there are some other optional configurations that you can click here, um, but I would recommend that for more advanced users once you're more comfortable. If you uh, are trying to connect a slave machine for the DTM network, you'll want to click this radio button here and put in the name or IP address of where the master is sitting and make sure they are able to communicate. The second thing you'll want to look at is the second tab, the adapters tab. This is where your DTM network traffic will go across. So there is a small amount of information that is required to be sent back and forth between master and slave machines and they will communicate on this adapter. If you click the drop down for this, you'll see all the adapters that your local machine has. Some people like for testing purposes, if you just have a trial or something for DTM, you could just use the loop bag. But if you're planning on talking to any slave machines out there, you'll want to use one of your other IP addresses. The last two tabs are um, something you can look into once you're a little more comfortable. Uh, the services tab is what allows you to run the applications as windowed applications. So like this is DT control running as a windowed application. Um, once everything is set up and you're happy with how it is, you can run them as services in the background. The last tab is for logging information. Um, it allows you to decide where you would like to keep the DTM logs and how long to keep logs before they're deleted. This is really only necessary if you run into an issue or you need our support to help you troubleshoot something. The only other thing that I'm going to mention in this part of the video is the licensing. So if you want to see licensing, you can go to Help Manage License. Um, it will inform you that in order to look at the license, you may have to restart your DTM services. So only the DTM master needs to be licensed. All of the slaves work as uh, additional resources for you to use for your DTM network. Um, we use Sentinel. Um, SafeNet, so you'll see this window brought up. Um, there are many different things that you can configure with your license, uh, but the most important is how many DTM connections you can have. This is how many devices that you can simulate. Um, and depending on if you have our legacy license or one of our new 1.3 license, you can either get all protocols or individually license different protocols. Other options can include things like DNP secure authentication.